But if we split up, would you delete all of the pictures that had the two of us together? Maybe. Yeah. At this point, listen, we've broken up before. Sure. And you were very much deleted from everything. This is like a dozen years ago for like two well, weeks. Yeah. yeah. I would assume based on who we are today that we would, it would be an amicable separation. Like, would it though? We got a kid. What it I though? think we respect each other. Do we though? I think that's what makes the difference. Like if I, if I, I leave you and I can't stand you and I want nothing to do with you, then yeah, why would, why would you remain there? You're no, no longer a part of my story. You're not like this. There's, there's no reason for there to be a gallery of our time together. If we're able to separate respectfully, then yeah, of course. Look, this is the man I dated, married, had a child with. Um, and here is the rest of my story because I, what are you staring at? I want to be a part of you right now. I see you. I need a new co-host. Welcome to Playing House, the podcast about keeping your relationship sexy and secure. I am the final boss of recklessness, Coulter Bouchard. Correct. And I'm Dominique. We are a real couple having real conversations, inviting you in as our third. On today's episode, the impact of social media on relationships, jealousy and comparison, healthy boundaries online, and it goes down in the DMs. But first, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good because my sister's watching our kid. I was like, are you trying to convince me or convince yourself? No, I, I took a breath because I feel like I can. Mm. Uh, my sister Danielle's watching Nia. I had my first big event. For Danielle. For Danielle, yes. I had my first work, big work event for the year last night. So uh, she watched Nia because obviously you had to go after hours. Um, so I got to sleep in. This morning, which meant getting out of bed at like 7.15. Amazing. <laughs> I love that for you. Thank Talk you. about the event last night because you came home. Uh, I picked you up. I picked you up downtown yeah. after work. And mm-hmm. you were, uh, Dominique was really excited because like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to say what you said and then I'd love you to give sure, context. Sure. Dominique goes, I want to ride this high for once. Yeah. 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 Um, I host a lot of community events at work um, and get a lot of great feedback and just it, it's, it's important for Me as a black woman to create spaces where other women of color, other women who don't have large platforms can have like a safe space to like create, meet each other, just have, just create a vibe at the end of the day. And after each one of these events that I've hosted over the past almost two years now, it's always like, okay, on to the next one. Mm. What what am I doing next? How am I going to top this? What can I improve upon? Which is important, like always acknowledge all of that. But what I don't often do is take the time to just like, recognize what i've done take in the feedback all the good stuff obviously all the bad too what bad though there wasn't what any. you're the baddest <laughs> so i mean truly hey. <laughs> so I really just give myself the opportunity to like just like you said ride that wave and and enjoy the moment for for once without having to think about okay but how am i going to top this next time you need to plan she needs to plan events you need to be an event plan. I don't not think even, I do. What, what would be like a bougie kind of title for this? Not an event planner, but like a bespoke experience. Designer. Sure. Curator. Bespeaker. Bespe- yes. Yeah. yeah, I don't know that I would do that full time. I don't know. Like there's the actual execution of an event when like the day of the rush of, of it happening, seeing it all come together, getting like seeing the vibe you've created is always the incredible part. But there are so much like the logistics behind the scenes that go into like the little details that really make the, the difference in an event. Bruh, I don't know that I could dedicate my life to that. (laughs) But what if you did like, okay, here's the thing. Instead of doing like a, instead of doing like three dozen, you know, like broke B events, you do like, you do two events for Beyonce and then for Beyonce or like, a, well, I was going to say someone of that caliber. Who else is there? Right. No, well, maybe listen, Blue Ivy Carter. You, oh, you want me to come from what I do as like a part of my day job yeah. to creating designs, yeah. creating events for Beyonce. That's ridiculous. Um, uh, cur- curating bespoke experiences <laughs> for Beyonce. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It sounds like you're trying to get me to meet quit. Beyonce and well, I'm, that, tr- I'm trying to meet Beyonce you, okay and actually you need to do that? I'm trying to meet Solange let's be honest here okay I like how you say her name you say it very French Solange <laughs> <laughs> but how are you doing I'm good I had six days off in a row um for the first time in I'm gonna get emotional here for the first time since we went to Grenada in June of last year mm-hmm. and uh it was nice it, what, Grenada oh was my, nice. Listen, Grenada, Grenada nice. exactly. 
there's a song and everything. And there should be a song for the six days in a row that I had off. I just, I truly believe that my life would be so much better if I had 10 weeks of vacation a year. 10. That's 10. a very specific number. How did you arrive at 10? Um, Because I heard one time that, so I work in radio, and a person who does not work there anymore but used to, and I'm going to give no further context. Cool. <laughs> apparently, he had like 10 weeks of vacation. Wow. 10. What? That's oh. almost a week off every month. That's beautiful. So like what? Because he had it, that's what you need to aspire yeah. after now? See, I told you that's what you do. You hear, oh, I make this much. And you go, oh, so I need to make this okay, much. Okay, give me five plus weeks. Three. I'll take five. I think our morning show is five or maybe six weeks. Give me five. Give me five. I got three. And I listen, very grateful for three. Give me five. Give me, give the kids from some more vacation, you know? Give the kid five weeks. Let's go. Yeah, I'd love that for us. Because we never take time off together. No, often we need to take time off um, because our child is sick yeah. or because uh, one of us is we're going to be out of town or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, it's sucky, you know, <laughs> this year, like... this it changes this year, though. Yeah, we've we've been talking about this uh, for a couple of episodes in a row now. Just like the stress I have on my chest and I need to like things need to I need to I need to no longer have chest pain. Mm. Yeah, I'm a 32 year old man. Yeah. Like, what are we doing here? That's that's ridiculous. And I think part of that is uh, 10 weeks of vacation. I think that if I just got 10 weeks of vac nine and a half, I'll take. Uh, I think that that would make a world of difference. Sure. And I think that the chest pain uh, might still be there, but it would only be there for uh, 42 weeks a year. Good. So, so what did you do with your six six days? I worked. But on like stuff that I really wanted to work on, okay. which was awesome. Uh, I've got some really cool stuff in the works that I always just want to like blab about it. Yeah, and I encourage you uh, not to. And Dominic's always like, to. just like keep it under your hat for As a, a marketer, while. I encourage just you to like, you know, a have bit. a teasing phase, a launch phase. Okay, let me let me try to tease this properly. Oh, uh, we've got a big partnership coming up. Okay. We've got a potential trip coming up. We've got an exciting new chapter. It's, the teasing was so good, even I'm confused. Even my nipples are hard after that. Piece. <laughs> Speaking of which, I didn't know whether to put a shirt on over this. I got, can we, can we, do, will you give me your opinion? Yeah. Oh, this is exciting. Okay. Okay. So okay. we got shoulders out, or we have, uh, you know, I'll cover them up a little bit. Let the guns out. Yeah. Guns yeah. out. Yeah. I'm showing a little shoulder. You're showing a lot of shoulder. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, you want the full shoulder? I'll give you full take shoulder. Take it off slowly. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you have a soundtrack for this? <laughs> it's the only music track this thing has. I, I know I could add more, but... Oh, yeah. I'm kicking it off oh, in a yeah. really small chair, and I'm a giant <laughs> man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> That's that. I'm a little high off uh, cough syrup right now. Good. Yeah. Good. At least you took it because you don't know how to manage sickness. When our kids, uh, yeah, I do. I complain about it for days. Right. So when our kid has a cough, I have to take turn off my phone. That just dinged. Um, you often give her Tylenol, and it's like, why are you giving her Tylenol? Because she has a sniffle. So that doesn't make any damn sense. So for legal reasons, that's not true. Okay. Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> what am I doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Your mug so, says, girl, you got this. I don't think you do. I do. Shout out to Fast and Female. Girl, you got this. And it's a couple lies she's telling about her husband. <laughs> so then you'll also take Tylenol because you have pain in your throat. And it's like, no, there are germs, which is why there's pain in your throat. And you need to target the germs, not just the pain. But I'm a little loopy right now um, off of the cough syrup and the Vyvanse, which for re legal and also the truth reasons... I have a prescription for that, but I feel like maybe the combination, not terrific. Are you supposed to take medication? I don't know. Okay. Especially in like close timing. One of two things is going to happen. Either I will have a heart attack or I will uh, launch some sort of scientific discovery later today. Okay. So do both on the podcast. I feel like that'd be great. Have a heart attack? What are you I, doing? I mean, not do both. Like what? as in choose. If either happens, make sure it's on the podcast is all I'm saying. So you can have proof. To go to our insurance company to say, yeah, I'll take that million dollars now, please. The virality, too. Yeah. Which kind of is a great segue. You know, I love a great segue. 
to our topic of the episode, which is <laughs> <laughs> like the thing is, I get called like in the in the like I get tens of thousands of comments on videos a week. <laughs> and a lot of them people are calling me corny and people are just like, oh, the ultimate like th- what a dad joke machine. And it's like, no, 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 no. The cornfield is over here. What you are in Nebraska. You're so, so corny. corny. What did I say that was so corny? Oh, what a great segue. Yeah. I, oh, I love great, a good segue. I do great transitions. Oh, seven o'clock. It's Rihanna. It seems like you're upset because you don't know how to transition as well as I do. I can teach you. I just transitioned from uh, sleeves to no sleeves. You'd have to, uh, from my encouragement and okay. motivation. So you're welcome. I can teach you, but you'd have to humble yourself and be ready. I can't to do learn. that. I know. I'm listen. I'll, I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner. That's what it says on my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> lifelong <headline>. learner. <laughs> I think that means unemployed. But also, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just I'm I, yeah I, I'm not going to humble anyway, myself. So today's topic Why? is social media and its effects on relationships. AKA hashtag couple goals. We met on social media. I mean, kind of. We met on Facebook. I mean, that was our first like contact. That was our I first, yeah. Form stalked of you in person for several weeks. That's great. So that's great. It is. It worked out. Stalking works. Did you want to mention how Dude, we put that on a t shirt? Stalking, stalking works. works. Did you want to mention how we first connected on Facebook? Um. Yeah. I. Do you have a picture of the message? I Probably do. right. I do. do you have it like ready to go? No, I don't. Do you have either? I, ready I have to go story, or just I have the story. Picture, period. I got the story ready to go. I'm going to paint the picture. It's, even correct. it's called it's Theater here. of the Mind, okay? Yeah. This is video, so it doesn't really need to be Theater of the Mind. People are it? also listening, so but mostly, close okay. your eyes for this part. Okay. Anyway. Is this the final episode? <laughs> I think so. It feels natural. Heart attack, scientific discovery, or divorce. <laughs> Do it on the pod. So after weeks of uh, stalking Dominique in class, because we had a writing class together on Thursdays, this is first year of university, 2009. Uh, send this babe a message Ew. on Facebook. Was it even called Messenger? I think it was like Facebook chat still. Sure. Anyway, on Facebook. And I was like, hey, like, hey, pretty mommy, let me whisper in your ear. Let me tell you. you they're right. You are corny. Ew. And I was like, hey, want to come over to my dorm? Because I lived on campus. And she did. And then you came over and we, did we kiss that first time? No, I think we did. No, we didn't. Didn't I like, hey, can I... Can I just like taste your lip gloss or your lip chap? I think that was that day. No, that wasn't. No? No. Did you have a drink at my place that day? I don't remember. But you had another girl there. Katie Bishop. Uh, yes. Who's not Katie Bishop Who's anymore. no longer Katie Bishop at the time. You had and what, another one of our um, our peers was in the room as well. And uh, dancing came up. And somehow we got into the dollar wine. Yeah. And then you, you guys are like, well, what does it look like? What is the dollar wine? Yeah. So we put on the dollar wine. And I did that for you two white folk. And that I think that was the turning point for you. That was okay. Tell them that story this in is... Black History Month. Wow. <laughs> it ha- it originally happened in September or October, so it's okay. But That should wow. have been my first sign. Just the, the, the being mesmerized by the dollar wine yeah. should have been like, Dom, this is not, this is not it. But here we are, 14 years later. Could have charged maybe a buck fifty, you know? That's what you're saying, eh? You're so whack. Okay. <laughs> fine then, fine now. Forever fine. So we're talking about social media and its impact on relationships. Um, this is also the Valentine's episode. I think this comes out around Valentine's oh, the, Day. You're wearing red. The only I, You get it? I got it. And I got it earlier and then I forgot until now. <laughs> so... Uh, I'd like to explain. I uh, my skin's a little red. I've been going a little bit too hard on the like adapalene lately, which is a kind of retinol. Okay. And uh, I, I keep thinking I can do it every night. I can't. I gotta. I no, gotta do it every other night. Oh my god! A lot of people work up to it. I've been using this stuff for like a year. Yeah, like maybe you don't work up to it. Maybe your skin will never like ex- be strong enough to accept this is that. Three nights in a row. I got a cool hair. Dude, that's... I think I'm hooked on a dab. Okay. <laughs> and so uh, I was like, oh, if I wear red, it's just going to make me look redder. And the only red shirt that I had was like a checked, like, I don't know, like preppy kind of. Whatever. Why are you telling the story? Because you're sad you didn't wear red? No, I made the right choice not wearing red. I just okay. don't have any other red clothing. Okay. So. Okay. You don't have, it's not like. You do you want to buy me some red? No. Clothing? No. I'll buy myself more. I, okay. If that's. None for happen, the boy though, hey? Medium, we're going to arrive at. Anyway, what were you talking about? 
the episode. Right. Trying so oh, this, hard to this start. Thing, yeah. So hard to start. <laughs> um, yeah. So we, we speak about um, social media and its impacts on relationships and this being the the uh, Valentine's Day episode. Um, I think it's important because especially like we're starting to get some traction. Well, first of all, <laughs> shout out to me because am I posting consistently for a whole week? Yes. Am I not? Whole- Ooh, bad week. Bad week. <laughs> Not a good week for me. And the irony is like, I, I finally put together a content calendar. I'm like, mm. here are all the things. And then I just got washed ashore uh, with busyness, but I got to schedule. If, it's, I, if I schedule it, it's taken care of. It's fine. I got to schedule it. Okay. Pull up your numbers, bro. Yeah. I was just giving you space to yeah. talk. Put that, put that not, mic not, back not, up to the face. I'm not reintroducing this segment again. I'm not doing it like a fourth time. I'm just not. So I'm going to let you get it all out. <laughs> I'm going to move the mic aside. Do what you need and to do. And another thing. Yeah. You took the five minutes this morning? And that's why I didn't wear red. Oh, my God. Our next episode is going to be about communication. <laughs> that's what it's going to be. Okay. So with us starting to get a bit of traction online, you're getting a lot of traction online. Um, I think our like our obviously our, our relationship gets a little bit more visibility with that as well. But you even mentioned that like we, our relationship kind of started on social media. You DM'd me. It goes down in the DMs. <laughs> we also kind of we first connected through email as well because no, I guess that was so. What happened was we um, in our program they used to send mass emails to all hundreds of people in our program. Asking, like, can I swap this class with you? Anybody dropping oh, this yeah. class, I'll take it. Anybody selling this textbook, I'll buy it off of you. And it's the like, textbook ones were so annoying. Like dozens uh, in a day. Like they, they were just constant. And so Coulter, before I knew him, he sent a response to one of these mass emails that said, uh, what, what did it say? <laughs> Please keep hitting reply all. I love yeah. getting a thousand emails a day. <laughs> right, right. And so I thought that was hilarious because like no, we were all thinking it, but he was the first one to actually like send it to everyone and, and acknowledge it. So I sent him a DM, like quoting the email. And I'm like, I love you, like because that's also just how I spoke. When I found things funny, I said like, I love it, I love you, Da-da-da. dude. When I saw that, I was like, Oh my god, she loves me. <laughs> like not even kidding. Oh, I did it. Oh my, I've talked about this. I think it was in the last episode and I was like praying for <laughs> praying to be part of an arranged marriage so that like I would have someone to be in a relationship with. And uh, Dominique saying this is truly pathetic, truly, <laughs> truly <laughs> pathetic. And uh, I was like, oh, my God. The shorty's in love. Yikes. So, yeah, our relationship, like our platonic eventually romantic platonic it started off platonic we 10 started seconds off maybe okay all started through social media um and so i think it's a good conversation for us to have um i lost my train of thought wow did you take your vivance yet talking. <laughs> okay let's talk about it I'll, I'll throw it over to you what, what do you think about when i talk about the theme do you remember the theme Equity and parenting? Right. I think it's a difficult thing to navigate. And I think a lot more people are, I'd love to know the stats on this. How many people are actually, and this could be its own episode, how many people are actually meeting online? How Mm. many people are meeting through dating apps? Because I would imagine your Instagram is probably linked to it. Or would you not want to do that? Who knows? I don't know. I guess. We're so out of touch. I've used Bumble BFF and Bumble... I think it's Bumble Work, Bumble Career. And also, bu- I've used Bumble Sex, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's called Bumble Sex. Um, yes, because Bumble has uh, different types of profiles. One where you can like connect with friends locally. One where you can connect with, um, just like network, career-wise. Um, and then, of course, there's like Bumble Sex. Yeah, Bumble Sex. <laughs> um, so when I was using the career one, I believe, like, yeah, I could connect to your, your Instagram. Um, you can also pick like your your top songs. Like sh- you can connect your shop, your Spotify. Whoa! To show like what your music tastes were on the BFF one. I don't know if that's for the core one as well. Um, yeah, but it also makes you think about when you're dating and like connecting with people. The fact that it's so easy to like find out so many things about them mm. through social media, and then it's a balancing act of like, okay, 
How much do I look into about this person? Um, how much do I reserve so that I'm learning through connecting exactly. with them? Exactly. You want yeah. some surprises. Yeah. Oh, but, but but maybe you don't. You want? I want to find out after the third date that you are into furry porn. Okay. Like me. Yeah. I don't know that you would learn that from someone's Instagram. <laughs> oh, people who are into furry porn, they'll let you know. Okay. They're like vegans. <laughs> they'll tell you twice before you even ask. And you're like, I'd like to forget. And they're like, can't now. But it's also like exes. Like, how do you properly create that boundary? Like, uh, create that separation from that person if you are constantly especially if you have similar friends if you're constantly seeing life updates about them mm. online as well let me ask you this if we broke up mm -hmm. if dominique and i broke up would you would you delete all of our like shared posts would you delete any picture on instagram that had me shared in it Shared posts it's different because we're we're married bro. i know but like let's say we split up let's say you messed up because that's the only way this is happening you mess <laughs> up and dinner's not on the table at five o'clock one day. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. If yeah. it was on the table at five o'clock one day, like, or whenever I got home, I'd be like, what did you do? <laughs> What'd you do? But if we split up, would you delete all of the pictures that had the two of us together? I, uh, I or archive even. Maybe. Yeah. At this point, listen, we've broken up before. Sure. And you were very much deleted from everything. This is like a dozen years ago for like two well, yeah, weeks. Yeah. Um, did you want to get into that story? Because that has to do with social media. I don't. Story. Well, okay. Um, yeah. I don't know that I would necessarily remove everything. It's, I would assume based on who we are today that we would um, separate. It would be, it would be an amicable separation. Like, would it though? We got a kid. What I think though? we respect each other. Do we though? I think that's what makes the difference. Like if I, if I, I leave you and I can't stand you and I want nothing to do with you, then yeah. Why would, why would you remain there? You're no, no longer a part of my story. You're not like this. There's, there's no reason for there to be a gallery of our time together. I think if we are able to do so um, respectfully and yeah, of course you're a huge part of my story and of, of who, why I am, who I am, why I am the way can you help me finish? Am I a sentence? big part of this? <laughs> Yikes. You are a huge part of who I am today. So if we are is able- Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It? You tell me, sir. You tell me. So if we're able to separate respectfully, then yeah, of course. Look, this is the man I dated, married, had a child with. Um, and here is the rest of my story. Because I, what are you staring at? I want to be a part of you right now. I see you. I need a new co-host. We see you. Girl, you got this. Girl, I'm about to get this. What what what's your response? Would you archive, delete? Um the lower performing ones for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like and it certainly like anything over oh I'd say for sure. anything over like anything over 250k views, I'm keeping up. Can we be honest? Yeah. You wouldn't have a TikTok following. If what? If we were not together. Yeah, probably. Wait, would. wait, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? All my first videos and were just I'm taking, me. And I'm taking my kid. So okay. yours. <laughs> did you want to put another cherry on top of this Sunday? <laughs> Not cherry. What else? You want to take my student debt to Oh my God. Well, no, don't take that. <laughs> <laughs> Not me and student debt in the same category. No, I would uh I would ruin your life in order to take that child completely away from you. Just know that I would be your undoing. So Oh, let me look into the camera. Dominique, I will be your undoing. And you can use this in court one day if you want. No, I have no doubt you will be my undoing in life, period. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to be your pants undoing right now. <sighs> trying to undo themselves so damn tight. Yeah, for me? <laughs> That's what they're saying, eh? <laughs> We're having fun. Also with social media, I think there's so much jealousy and comparison. Oh my God, involved. yes. Even outside of relationships. Yeah, well, yeah, period. But then you think about, I remember when the hashtag couple couple goals first became a thing. Um, and I think like that was a, at the beginning of our relationship or like the early years of our marriage, I would mm. say. Um, and everything was hashtag couple goals, hashtag, hashtag couple goals. It was like, okay, they're eating breakfast together. What is the goal? I don't understand. Like what, what, what is so aspirational the about fiber people intake. being able <laughs> to sit down and eat together? Like when you really <laughs> saw how it was being Yeah, used. was that Vector? <laughs> <laughs> Raisin bread. <laughs> so, 
two scoops in this economy? <laughs> <laughs> and even now, like, we will post things online and p- people in the comments, hashtag couple goals. I like, put that in, I, that's the hashtag I'm using, bro. bro but Relationship so, goals, marriage goals. It's, so gross. it's working. It's so gross. Like, when I think about my couple goals, I'll look to like the older people who are creating content. Like, ah, oh, I wish I knew her name off the top of my head. But there is this. Um, she fine? She's gorgeous. Okay, and she I, has I'll probably know them. Let's her go. and her husband, they both have gray hair. She was off, like, she's often shooting in her washroom. And she's always preparing to go out. They go out a lot. Oh, I know this chick. You know yeah. them, right? And so she's like brushing her hair and then he'll come over. And, They're like, like about to do sweet it. Sweet talk her, yeah. like grab on her and stuff like that. She's like, so, hey. Exactly. Like it's so sweet. And the, the goal there is like the fact that they're maintaining that like flirtatious behavior and the fact that they're still so like physically and emotionally attracted to each other and like keeping that fire over the years you know what i mean like that's beautiful that's my couple goals eating breakfast yeah that's cool i hope to continue being able to do that but like let's aspire a little bit higher is what i'm getting at is there there's no doubt oh a goal to like to still be physically and emotionally attracted i'm eating you alive devouring you about to charge me with cannibalism oh my god what's your question can we pause if i do <laughs> that's my question your question i is, see you getting all flirty over I, there if i doubt that you'll remain emotionally and physically attracted to yeah you? there's no doubt i mean i think i think any human being would have that that like really society like trains us to believe that as you age especially as a woman you're losing oh yeah don't get too your old beauty. see you're like you're, <laughs> you're losing your beauty you're losing like your 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 hotness you do you still have sex appeal when you become a mom or if you choose to become a mom you, you no longer have your sex appeal like you got to do everything to avoid being categorized as a mom because that's gross or as a dad because i don't think dads have it as bad dads like the dad bod was trending for a while like that mentality yeah. is not the same for men as it is for women if you had that if like, you had like hashtag mom bod and like even that feels gross to say because like all bods are different like whatever i do have a mom body i had a child and it changed my body and this is my body as a mom absolutely but also dad bods seem to be like dad bods seem to be leaning into like almost like an unhealthy level of weight dad bod was okay. like or not even like weight like it's more of a shape. I think it's more like... Or like just like you don't take care of yourself. It's like having a larger belly and the rest of you is not necessarily as And large. you're not like groomed well and, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. No, it's just like dad bought was just like, oh, I'm a slob and it's okay. Oh, there's wearing big tees that are stained and yeah. greasy. And, okay. It's more of a more of a lifestyle than a, than Dude, a body like, shape. Shout out to my thick kings, you know? Shout out to my thick, hashtag thick Little kings out there. Boy. What was that song? That probably means something way different than what I think it means. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I think I'm a thick king, but. (laughs) Can't even look at me right now, can you? (laughs) Terrified for later. What are your thoughts? To your point about like aging, I posted this video uh, and it had like, I don't know, 107,000 pictures of us. It took like three hours to edit that thing. It was to the sped up version of Nosebleeds by Mr. Wives. Great song. And it starts with us like meeting in my dorm, right? And then like, you know, dating a little bit. And then like the, there's a key change. And suddenly like I'm proposing and we're getting married. And then it's all of the time afterwards, right? And uh, dude, like you're way finer now. Like, listen, 18, like you're a little cutie for sure. Like a hundred percent. But like, damn. Damn. Yeah, but that's that's intentional. That is Damn. me wanting to improve, wanting to progress. Um, I'm just saying you're older and like and investing Damn. the time and the money necessary to 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 improve it, uh, based on what my opinion of improving is. Um, could you imagine it was the opposite <laughs> that you're like, ah, you used to look better back in 2010. Like that would. Be- <laughs> Let's go back to, let's have an audio only (laughs) podcast, Dominique. (laughs) Let's just burn the cameras. What do you think? But there's also like, again, Beyonce's song, um, I'm gonna keep it how it is. So you'll never say how it used to be. Like that's intentional. Mm. Women, I think, especially we 
are not allowed to age. And it's just such a big deal if you age gracefully. Like all the comments, oh my God, aging like fine wine. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, she didn't even look 30. 30 is not old. I'm about to be 33. 33 is not old. Not me. It's just not. It's Do you have a fear of being in your, your no, 30s? Why would I? I'm nowhere close to that. Okay. So I'm you're, a, you're allowed to I'm age. turn 20 soon. Okay. <laughs> also, whatever Beyonce's doing uh, that led up to the cover of what was the, the Renaissance record where she's sitting on the horse. Mm. I'm not giving her a damn like you. I'll give her a darn. Darn Beyonce. Darn. <laughs> she ain't at the Dominique level, but like darn, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then Solange gets a darn and a half. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, there's also, I think of, uh, about, um, communication boundaries. Like, I think there's a respectful way to of navigate, thirsting over celebrities to navigate social media in a relationship. And it's going to differ based on relationships, but like, what would you say is our healthy way of navigating social media? Cause like, for example, you, you post a lot of sweatpants content. <laughs> so, I saw what you posted to me the other day. What did I post of you? The so other every day? every morning, Dominique does a ginger shot, mm -hmm. and uh, I did a ginger shot with her for the first time, and putrid, absolutely putrid. But um, but, but my throat doesn't hurt. I'm not taking. I'm not high off no cough medicine. Keep that energy. Yeah, let's get the honey in there ahead of time. So anyway, I get lost. <laughs> I get lots of thirsty DMs, and uh, love them, love them. Mm -hmm. No, nah, I'm not responding. I think that's part of the you know what I mean? respectful boundary. Like keep if them you were coming, to but like I'm not responding to those. <laughs> I also think it's disrespectful of other people. No, it's not to send you. It's okay. Their CD, like so. I've I've seen some of them. They're they're quite disrespectful towards me, towards us as a relationship. But don't ruin this for me. I've never had this before. But like, if you were to respond, yeah, that's that's definitely a boundary that should not be crossed. Here's how I operate with literally everything on my phone, with the exception of like, if I'm buying you a gift, for instance, Valentine's Day's coming up, or like my porn browsing history. That's <laughs> like, uh, we gotta be in the right place, right time to be like, what are you watching recently? Oh, you should add this to your Pornhub queue. What's on yours? Is this a conversation with me or with someone else? This is a conversation uh, that has like, it's based on a true conversation between us. <laughs> right? That's so confused. Anyway. Um, so with the exception of me buying Dominique a gift or like when I'm scrolling the hub, I operate as if were Dominique to open my phone at any time and go through literally anything, any text message conversation, any DM any any corner of my phone, I always operate as if Dominique saw this, how would she react? Would she feel respected? Mm. Would she like this? Would she not like this? When did you start to think like that? Long time ago. I'd say probably like, probably like a decade ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like before we got married and also like I'm, I know a lot of people get off on like, Literally on uh, like whether it's like having a physical relationship with somebody else like mm. that kind of like I can get away with it. Um, I just like I know who I am. Mm. I know who I got. I really know who I got. <laughs> Do you trying to get some now? <laughs> and I have I have no need to like. I'm the same person in the DMs. I'm the same person over the phone as I am in real life on mm -hmm. this show like mm -hmm. it's that's just who i am yeah yeah i agree i ain't looking to lose I this <laughs> i agree yeah right <laughs> i um that's why i'm so weary of online couples there are a lot of like youtube couples We're and families that i used to subscribe to and that like i still subscribe to to this day but i think the magic has kind of been lost on me because of all the divorces of all the divorces. <laughs> like, okay. First of all, there's like, there's the reality TV curse, right? So what do you mean? There, every couple who has had a reality show has ended up in divorce. Do you mean ones that start on like the bachelor? No, oh. I mean, every couple mm -hmm. who has had a reality show has ended up divorced. Oh, like, like the Osbournes, for instance. Although I think they're still together. Are they still together? 
it? Yeah, I think that Sharon was like, nah, I don't really want to do this. Maybe she, maybe Sharon broke up with Ozzy, but Ozzy's just like so out of it. He's like, I, Sharon, you've never said that ever. Oh my God. And he's, he's like, he's not even gaslighting her. He just, <laughs> just genuinely does not can't remember. like, there's no intake. Um, I'm trying to think of some other couples. I can't think of any. I mean, Jessica Simpson she, and, and Chris and Chris, Nick Lachey, they were one of the first. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think like early reality Kim TV and days. Kanye. Okay, but like, okay, every one of Kim's. Anna Nicole Smith and that old dude, right? They didn't divorce, did they? No, well, kind of. He died. He was a thousand years old. She was like 22 or something. Oh, they didn't divorce. The um, Lord divorced them. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, every, maybe it's not every, but like the majority. Mm. And even when Tiana Taylor and Iman. Shumpert. Is that how you say that? No, it's just like, I like the sound shump. <laughs> Which has, which has, it's like, it's one of our oldest inside jokes and I will not be explaining it here because I'm trying to get Disney to sponsor us. And I just like saying Schumpert. That's all I have left. With Tiana and Yvonne, when they were, then when they announced the reality show, listen, I am a Tiana stan. Yeah, like if too. that will be like, yeah. Yeah. Eh? Like, yeah, you can, like, you can try what you're doing right now. Like, Yeah. Valentine's episode. Yeah. That's what I'll get to. Yeah. Okay, cool. Fair. What a fun fair gift enough. for the two of us. Fair. You know? Okay, because that song three way. Yeah. Like, girl. Um, what, I was excited when they announced the the reality show because of course I want to know. Of course I want to be nosy. I want to like what's going on behind the scenes after that that video that they made together. Mm. Um I want to see what your life is like. But at the same time, I was like, damn, don't do this because of the curse. Like yeah. whenever I think it's just a boundaries thing. Whenever you let, allow too much information to be public info, lines get blurred. Um, and then your relationship becomes a job. That too. That too. And I think that that's a huge reason why like, why um, social media couples, um, it's harder for me to watch them as frequently now. Like there are lots of couples that I love to watch on TikTok, for example, just on one-off fun content that is not necessarily like vlog daily vlogging daily vlogging is exhausting oh my god but that guy I showed you um i forget his name but he's done like 800 and i think is is um jack cook i think his name is he's got like 900 daily vlogs that's in a row wow that's more than casey neistat that like, i think look casey's he's burnt out yeah i don't know where he is right now but i hope he's like recovering with Candace. because Damn. He's like, I got, got enough kids. money and I'm putting out one one video a month. That's Love it. Love that for him. You know? Bought some but new like, sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hope so. They um it's true. When your your daily life becomes your job, there where's the boundary? Yeah. Where where's the part where it's like, okay, this is just for us? Because everything is content at the end of the day. Everything is Oh, I bet my viewers would love to see this. Oh, this would be hilarious on YouTube. This would be hilarious on the podcast, mm. for example. So it's like it's really for us, it's defining like what is the boundary? Where, where how do we navigate what is funny for for our audience and what's just funny for us? Because like we have our our time too. Do you think it's a conscious decision? I it's not for me. Mm. I just I'm going on vibes, right? I'm just going on vibes, and I know what's appropriate, and yeah. I know it's not appropriate. Yeah. And hey, at the very beginning, like you know, when I started my radio career, even before that, I think when I was like at doing a college radio show. I was like, oh, everything in the relationship is yeah, open yeah. for, and it's like I had two listeners, number one. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not even really entertaining anybody, even if that intimate story was entertaining in the first place or that argument or whatever. Uh, and I'm also like pissing off the most important person. So even on like, even learning for my radio show, what makes sense to share and what makes sense to keep private. Yeah. In the beginning was a bit of a struggle. Oh yeah, we used to have fights yeah. all the time about that. Um because yeah, exactly. Uh, I agree. And like when I, <laughs> we're dating ourselves. When I started one of my many blogs yeah. back in the day, <laughs> goldensunscreen.blogspot.com. <laughs> and it was navigating. Like I, it wasn't even. A, I was dating this boy at the time, or just like talking to this boy. The, at the CN time. Tower guy. Oh, and, cringe. Anyways, and he, uh, I would basically like chronicle what was going through my mind, which comes to think of it, might have been inappropriate. But oftentimes I was just like chronicling my thoughts that weren't necessarily about him. And he took everything personally and assumed that I was always talking about him. Yeah. Um, And like blew up on me one day and then we stopped, we stopped speaking. But yeah, it's also a matter of like, 
you need your own space. I have my own space online. You have your own space online. And sometimes mm. we collaborate and make it ours. Like, for example, that that's what the podcast is. But it's also like, I don't always, I don't, what was your question? Do I consciously navigate it that way? No, I don't. I think we've come to a point where we're like, yeah. For example, Nia, she is mostly off limits when it comes to content. Like, you'll make jokes about her online, share stories about her online, sure. But in terms of like, when you posted that fish video, when her her fish died, um, I knew and I trusted that you wouldn't post too much inf- intimate information. Oh no, I don't want her. I don't want online. my daughter crying on camera. Exactly, like, right? Unless I can monetize that again, oh Disney, reach out, or like <laughs> if like someone from Big Fish, if the Big Fish lobby could reach out, right? <laughs> but even like editing that, I didn't want her face crying on camera, and so like I didn't even have her face in it. Yeah, and. When she's like, I think the the full tape is like twenty minutes long or something. Yeah, it was a long conversation. She's in hysterics. This is her first interaction with death. Yeah, that was her learning that things and p- the people around her and the things around her will eventually pass away. Yeah, so that was very, it was a very important conversation. And the fact that we had a camera rolling, I yeah, think I knew you were going to handle that very respectfully. It's my, it's my little girl. Absolutely, because I think. What I've seen on YouTube, like over the years, has been, oh, this is gonna make a hilarious mm. vlog, and like the thumbnail is the kid like bawling for their life, like yeah, yeah the, the clickbait is right there, and I think like it would work on TikTok too, but it's more important that my daughter loves me and knows that I love her, and it can trust <laughs> like, you, and like it is safe with you in person and and online, and yeah. yes, like my daughter's the rudest kid on earth. Here's why, like yeah, it's it's jokes at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, and also, like, I'm the butt of those, right? Oh, absolutely. Like, absolutely. like, yeah, she's like such a funny kid, and obviously gets it from me. And she, she's just like, I, I think she's starting to know that she's funny. Yes. Right. Yes. And really leans into that, and it's like delightful. And I love sharing that with people. And I mean, you talk about like we talked earlier about the hashtags we're using. I felt cringe about putting hashtag interracial couple. I still do in there i don't anymore and i'd say it's about a year of that because there's so much vitriol that we get Mm. and not that like i'm gonna completely fight that on my own oh look he defeated local white man defeats racism yeah what a headline that would be (laughs) white man especially yes (laughs) and i love showing people that not that we're just like them because obviously we're better and not like colorblind or any of that BS. But it's really important to me to show a strong, committed relationship mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to people that love each other, to people that love having a child, mm-hmm. to people that are very intentional with their parenting and with their communication with, communication with each other. And clearly that not was, speaking. That yeah. was ironic. <laughs> <laughs> communication. <laughs> so good. And so... I'm absolutely going to put that. I'm going to continue putting that tag in there Mm. because I want to, you fight bad information with good information and I want representation. It sounds like, yeah, I finally want to, I want to see people who look like me on the screen. Okay. (laughs) I want to see people who look like me. Finally, it's, it's, it's time for the first uh, white male president. I think really. Yeah. That's why I'll be voting Trump. (laughs) Oh my God. I said white, not orange. That's scary, by the way. Speaking of social media, I, I don't want to. I gotta, I, I gotta excise to. that from my social media browsing. Yikes! That's so scary. No, there's no mention of that man on any of my feeds. Just absolutely not. Apparently, he wears a diaper. I don't want to get into talk about this man, please. But I'm not going to do it now because I think it's very triggering for Dominique. I'd say like an eight and a half out of ten Trump impression, <laughs> like. It's you never ask for it, ever, which hurts my feelings a little bit. But like, it's really good. You ready to talk about a pillow? Talk oh, I thought you were going to ask. No, me to of do course it. I wasn't. You ready to do it? You ready to unveil it? <laughs> All right. What's this week's pillow talk question? Okay. Uh, again, being Valentine's Day, what's the most unforgettable romantic moment we've shared, and how could we recreate it in a new, exciting way? I'll give you some time to think. No, I've got it. I'm trying to phrase it. Oh, okay. Properly. We had an evening last summer and we had a conversation in our hot tub. 
and the vulnerable. I, I don't think either one of, I know, we've never been that vulnerable with each other before. That was the most unforgettable romantic moment. There's another one, and then I'll get into recreating both of them, I guess. There was another one, there's this picture, and I'll post it. And uh, it's... There's this picture, and I'll make sure the world sees it. <laughs> there's this picture, and I will show you this picture. And it was us uh, the weekend before my pre-stem cell transplant PET scan. The PET scan that was going to reveal whether or not I could get a transplant and live. Spoiler alert, I did. And there's this, uh, there's this one particular picture, and you're like touching my face a little bit. And again, we didn't know what the results were going to be. We were waiting all weekend. We got an Airbnb in uh, Prince Edward County, which is like wine country, I guess, in Ontario, but it's not Niagara on the lake and it's certainly not California. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, we had pictures taken and like for a couple of minutes, I just forgot that I had cancer. And also weirdly, just, I was so present in the moment and I was just so okay with the future. And that felt really romantic to me as well because I was just there with you and two strangers taking pictures of us. I want to plug the photographers so badly. because Two cheeks. They were, two cheeks, thank you, because they were lovely um, and ended up hand-delivering the photos to us. Oh, yeah. I think I was at the hospital with you that day and they drove all the way down here hours, maybe in a couple hours Who knows? away from where they are um, to stuff those pictures into our bail box. And it was beautiful. And we ended up um, keeping those photos in your um, hospital room yeah. when you were recovering from your stem cell. So just, yeah, that was beautiful. I didn't even consider that as one of those moments. They're better than me. I'd have been like, here's a Dropbox link loser. No, truly. <laughs> Expires in 24 hours. Get on this. Like we transfer or something like that. You got a week, bro. Get, get, get to Costco now. Print these babies. <laughs> So how can I recreate those? Mm -hmm. uh, well, listen, time to open the hot tub pretty soon, right? A couple more months. We got an inflatable hot tub from Costco. You gotta tell people uh, that. I, I, listen, like... I love it. I love it. And, and that's, <laughs> I went to multiple Costco's to find this thing. Um, no, you look really distraught that I mentioned yeah. it's inflatable. What's wrong with that? Listen, we're South Oshawa trash already. Oh my God. And you have to add inflatable to the beginning no, of the hot tub. People look down on inflatable hot tubs and that's why you didn't want me to buy one. It's awesome. They're though. incredible. It's awesome. I'd love, well, I'd love like an, ins like one installed. Well, yeah, like one day. They're like grand, dude. Exactly. This was like $400, $500. Yeah. Something like that. Five yeah. or 600. Yeah. It's worth it. Have you cleaned it once, by the way? The answer is no, of course. Of course, no, you took, of course. You took care of that. Good. I do it. You did your husbandly duties. You don't get husbandly a duties. For that. Yep. I, I don't know more, why that's. Not I had a, a few term. more husbandly duties. I like to I don't do know to why you. You're nodding towards me. Your womb. <laughs> your womb. Your womb you're gross. <laughs> yeah, I'm sterile. We're gonna. We're keep. We're trying. We're trying for another one. <laughs> so that's fun. How can we recreate that? Reopening that, I guess. But just like. Trying to um, trying to make time for that vulnerability. Trying to like set the create an environment for vulnerability. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's difficult sometimes. It's like you know, you got stuff going on, raising a kid. It's uh, sometimes hard to get in the mood after you're like, oh, it's uh, it's midnight and my kid just woke up in a diarrhea. Let's try to transition over to giving my husband some goof troop. You oh, know what gosh. I mean? <laughs> right? Yuck! <laughs> Yuck! in case there was any doubt. So I get it. Those nights I don't. <laughs> and then as far as the other one, I guess get cancer again. Stop it. I don't like cancer jokes. Yeah. 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 I do, but like make them funny. I, they're make not. Make them funny. They're not funny. No. You like them. They're your defense mechanism. Yeah. I do not like them. That's how I process trauma by making fun of it. So what about you? Oh, I don't have an answer. But on that topic about creating room for vulnerability. Hold um, on, do you actually not have an answer? No, I, like, I hadn't really? considered it, no. Take a second. Um, I will in a second. Um, you said creating space for vulnerability. You need to let me finish the sentence or else I'm going to keep losing my train of thoughts. Um, we are starting couples therapy again on Valentine's Day. So I think that that's a great step towards making sure that we are Having getting help with making sure that we can create those spaces for vulnerability and like navigating beyond just those sessions, like what it looks like. Take the microphone back to your face, please. That is <laughs> also it's inflatable couples therapy, so it's not as good. 
I'll move it away again. <laughs> no, because I've already lost my train of thought. We have couples therapy on. Yes, I Valentine's said that. Day. I don't remember where I was going. So I'll consider what my answer is about um, romantic. Probably a time that you actually let me finish a, a sentence. I'm trying to remember a time. Um, did you mute yourself? You're playing music. Okay, I think it was. We had a night where. I gave us a challenge. We drove to the, the the dollar store. I remember that. Yeah. We drove to the dollar store. We each had five minutes yeah. to buy something on the list. <laughs> and so it was stuff like something that brings nostalgia, something that's my favorite color. A so game. Our, your partner, yeah, a game, your partner's favorite color. Um, anyway, that was like, they had those, we had those prompts. And then we came home, uh, put me in bed. And then we just went into the bag and like surprised each other with what we pulled out. So neither of us knew each other's favorite color. It turned out. <laughs> yeah, you thought mine was orange. Yes. Do you remember the game you got? I remember the game I picked. It was like a Nerf gun game. I thought that was my game. Oh. Oh, then mine was bowling. Yours was bowling was and mine was a Nerf one. gun. Yeah. Oh my God, the bowling one. These tiny, dude, these tiny little pins, they were like, they were like as thick as toothpicks and they kept falling over and you're like, ah, God, this is so frustrating. <laughs> and another romantic time we had was we just we both took the day off of work and went to the arcade i remember that day. yeah that was a lot of fun yeah and it was just shout out neb's fun shout world out in neb's. oshawa <laughs> um and it was just these moments of intentional play mm. you know what i mean it's it, it's as kids we have recess so there's like the set aside time for us to like run around and and, and have fun and we often lose that as adults mm. And as beautiful as moments where we're like sitting in the hot tub, um, talking are, and like that was an incredible moment. I think it's great when we're like, we need to intentionally get up and do something together. Um, that's lovely. I remember this day we went on, uh, we both had the day off and it was a weekday. I remember this. It was at our first apartment, downtown Toronto. Okay. And we went to the Badish Shoe Museum. I remember which that. Which I'd yeah, never yeah, been yeah. to. And I think we went like shopping at uh, Marshall's or something beforehand. Yeah, yeah. DJ Max or whatever. And uh, it was just a fun day. Mm -hmm. It was a great day mm -hmm. too. Like it's just little moments, right? Yeah. They don't have to be big expensive. Spa days, though I, lo I love those. Um, it can be a trip upstairs after you're filming your weekly podcast. Disrobing. Not touching your partner's makeup, of course. But that's what I'm saying. I like when it's beyond... Um, don't say sex. <laughs> well, yeah, beyond Ugh. sex, one. But two, just like... It could be a movie. It could be a movie. Oh my God. I came home one day and you bought the projector and a giant um, portable screen and set up a movie for us in the backyard. Like that, again, intentional. Obviously, my love language is gifts. Let's be so honest. And falling asleep gifts on your husband. And <laughs> acts of service, right? So those moments of buying each other little nostalgic things from the dollar store and playing with them yeah. feeds both of my love languages. As far as movies go, uh, so I bought the projector. We watched, uh, oh, the first season of, or I guess the only season of Gaslit with Sean Penn and Julia Roberts. I, you did. What a show. Because you fell asleep 20 minutes in. Leap. We tried watching Saltburn a couple of weeks ago. I think a week ago. I was asleep. Asleep. Why do you choose night? Minutes in. Don't do these things at night. Because we have a child to take care of during okay, the day. Okay, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah, you want more sex. I don't know. Wouldn't you? Look at her. <laughs> It's never enough. <laughs> can't even look at me. Someone in the comments was like, I love how she can't even look at him. Can't even make eye contact. You can't. Smitten over here. Those nails. You like them? Yeah. I'm a Valentine's nails. I show the toes? I don't know Not how. For free. Very tight Not pads. for free. What are you doing? Okay, great. That was twelve ninety nine a month. <laughs> Straight into the goddamn trash can. I bet a girl yesterday and she's like, I can help you start a Patreon. And I was like, Y'all are very serious about this Patreon. Yeah, it's a buck an inch. How about that? <laughs> okay, you ready for a uh, mailbox? Oh, you have a mailbox question. Oh, I thought I prepared one. Go ahead, please. We get so many, and, and this is what you go with? We get so many, and this is what you choose for this week. Okay. Wow, no name. <laughs> Wow, Coulter, your wife is so amazing. Congratulations. I want to know, what will you be giving her for Valentine's Day? I hear her, I, 
I hear that her favorite colors are gold and diamonds. Wow. They're right. They're right. And and strangely, no name. Sorry, I forgot to copy the name. I think her name was Joanne. Joanne. Right. Joanne. <laughs> Thank you so much for your <laughs> for your submission. If you want to submit a question, uh, you can find us at Dom Creates on TikTok or at Dom.creates on Gold Instagram. and diamonds? <laughs> Those are my favorite colors. Yeah. Um, gold is my favorite color. Diamonds or a and, color? Well, you can also just buy my birthstone. Diamonds are clear. How about a glass of water, idiot? No, that's stupid. <laughs> that's very stupid. <laughs> and you can just buy my birthstone, which is which are diamonds. So this person is just absolutely right. What's your answer? That's my answer. You a don't have sigh. you don't have a, a you don't have sigh. plans because Valentine's Day is four days away. You're not ready. It's two by the time this is posted. Okay, so what maybe, is your maybe answer? Maybe in the past by the time you watch it. I have, I have, listen. You I got have stuff what? planned. Well, what am I listening to? I got stuff, I'm, I'm going to tell you. You're going to answer Joanne. Maybe Joanne needs to mind her goddamn business, huh? Maybe Joanne. That is not how you maybe run jo a podcast. Maybe Joanne needs to be a little more grateful for the things Joanne already has. That's not how you run a podcast. And for the fine ass man that Joanne I'm, has. I'm so sorry, Joanne. Honestly, that's not how we plan to run this podcast. And I'm just so disappointed in him. How do we That's plan to run this podcast? Never been Please our tell me. Strategy. We wanted to create a space where others can. Why don't you create some space like for me? Right? Oh, I'm sorry, Joanne. <laughs> Why don't you create some space for me, Joanne? Huh? I'd say I don't need a lot, but that's a lie. <laughs> Is that your answer to poor Joanne? How about Joanne? You say, uh, thanks for always filling up my car with gas. Do you know Coulter? Joanne? <laughs> oh, trust me, I know Joanne pretty well. Joanne, I hope you I know don't Joanne unsubscribe. intimately. <laughs> Are you even subscribed to this? Oh my god. Sorry, Joanne. At Coulter Talks, <laughs> all platforms. Dom creates, Dom dot creates. On Instagram. At Joanne in mailbox. <laughs> so many. There's people that are just waiting to get their questions answered. So what? Joanne doesn't listen. We need to be, finish the website, equally. Joanne. <laughs> Maybe Joanne needs pay. Maybe Joanne seeks equity, which is why I wanted to give her her platform for her very important question that you don't have an answer to. So thank you so much for watching. I have plans, Joanne. Hopefully doesn't you'll be. Hopefully like you'll you. be grateful. Doesn't sound like you do. I hope we continue the conversation in the comments. If there was any particular part of the discussion that hit home for you, we'd love to hear more about it. Or if there's a part that you didn't agree with, please start a discussion below. I think I will. I think I'll start a discussion below. All you do is interrupt. So I hope you just talk in the comments moving forward and let me finish my sentences. Maybe if you had some interesting sentences. Oh! <laughs> uh, uh, Nikki Haley just got secret service protection. I think I'd like some too. So <laughs> you don't get that joke. Don't laugh. I don't know who that is. Go on is. the internet sometimes. All right. Bye. <laughs>